Is your town running out of space because of a huge population and wanted to expand somewhere, but not near your territory because of its stale resources or you want to expand your empire from the empty depths of your world to look populated? Well, I am going to show you how to fix that by making a colony. What's a colony, you ask? That's not an ideology. It's a territory or a country under a partial control of another country, which is yours in a distant or far location with its population of settlers from that country. Well, I will going to show you how to make a prosperous and dependable colony that will not rebel against you in the near future and also will make your Minecraft economy skyrocket. And note, this will not be like one of those penal colonies like Australia, Soviet Union's real life squid games and that Scottish failed colony. No, just a proper and successful colony we will set up my villagers dying but that's okay. First step is to gather colonists from an existing town or village. You need an existing and prospering nation in order to colonize barren lands. You have to pick qualified and important villagers for your colony, like for example, with perfect trade discounts and good trade deals. A good villager type to bring is a farmer for your crops and an easy villager breeder farm. Librarians is for paper or enchants you want to keep in your journey and a cartographer for maps. Don't forget to name your villagers, it will be useful in the future. Now you gathered qualified villagers for your future colony, we can now move on to step number 2 is to gather resources for your future colony. Gather much iron, crops, and food for your colony. Banners to fly our empire scholars and other valuable stuff so we don't end up getting killed by savages in our future colony. You might be safe but your villagers might die. You got your villagers and resources, we can now move on to step number 3 is to voyage to the unknown with your colonists. You don't really need to bring a lot of villagers, you can bring 3 to 2 villagers like I mentioned earlier, farmer, librarian, and a cartographer. Not really necessary but okay. Now how will you transport villagers? Well this is optional, you could use a ship, data pack, or mods, redstone flying machine, or just regular boats. This really depends on the player on what easy to use and comfortable for you. Now that you're sailing, flying, or whatever, you should now focus where to land, which is step number 4. Settle near a native uncivilized village or a good spot for your building desires. It's pretty optional where to settle but I recommend settling not too far to or too close to a native village as we don't want our villagers to combine with them. Don't take that out of context. Now we have settled, we should now focus on building which is step number 5 is to build a livable colony. I am talking about making a town hall, houses for your villagers, a wall for them to not escape, a farm for food, some villager breeders so you can make your population huge, don't forget the name tags, and a barracks to your small army in it, like golems or just little dogs. Now you have established a little town, it's time for another step, which is step number 6 is to exploit resources and explore the lands. Well, you're here for a reason, right? Explore the barren lands you settled and make a map so you won't get lost, or place roads and set up landmarks. Get every resources you can see if you see one like you won't access easily in your main town. Like for example, berries, a different wood types, and lots of more in your surroundings. Make farms for the resources you got and you can return from your main town to implement it there so you won't go back and forth and back and forth. Now we have an economy, we can now focus on investigating the native, which is step number 7, infiltrate the natives. This is why I reminded you to name your villagers so they won't mix with the natives. Uh, don't take it out of context, as you can use then these native villagers for a good use later on. But now infiltrate the village which sneakily get their resources like chests, tables, and animals if you want to. Fortunately for you, they are not jobs so they won't mind. As we learn about these natives and know their location, we should move to another step which is step number 8, exploit the natives. Exploiting I mean use them for different farms like for example iron farm, tomatic crop farm, villager farm, and <coughs> human trials. Since you conquered the village also with your great infiltration, we can now annex the town as our own and include it to your colony. Not going to use the S word for this because this is Minecraft and villagers are annoying as f Now for the last step which is create a dominion which is step number 9. Set up a puppet government in the town hall, assign a governor of the colony you own and place it to your town hall. Make sure it's loyal to you and it can now have an existing puppet state. I remind you this last step is very optional, you can just stop at step number 8 and just become a colony forever and expand as much as you want. 
You, you can still expand but it's your choice. And now there we have it, a prosperous colony with a good economy, villagers working, including the natives, a good roads for transportation in land and sea, a decent military, and a governor in charge, even though they don't do anything. And if you ever encounter one of these outposts, you can just do the ethical way. And if you ever feeling stale, you can just expand your colony or dominion to make it larger. Anyways, I hope you learned something and goodbye and happy colonizing.